Hello, and welcome back to Wild Sun Art Studio. My name is Robinson. I went on an adventure today, and I'm going to talk about it while we make some paper cuts. Please do like this video. Please comment, subscribe, yay, and share if you want, which would be awesome for me. So, um... I bought this package of color foil origami paper made by a company. Oh, it's at um, Ito. I think that's how you say it. A I T O H. I got this from um, Amazon, so it will be on there. And someday I will make an Amazon shop and then you can just like click 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 right to it but I haven't done that yet I don't think it's even that hard anyway um that's the paper here's the paper so aside from being on an adventure today um uh we are now in or we will be by the time this video goes out um in December the month of December that has more holidays than you can shake a stick at not that we're shaking sticks. Sticks are fine. Um, we're fine. The sticks are fine. Everybody's fine. And that really is the end result of today. Uh, so the 1st of December isn't always the beginning of church Advent, but it's the beginning of Advent as Western or American culture tends to do it. So I chose some green paper. And then the 6th of the December is the Feast of St. Nicholas, and he is often depicted as wearing this beautiful red um, cape with a hood, and sometimes it's got fur, white fur on it, and sometimes not. Um, but I think that red cape of Nicholas's helped to inform um, some of the uh, clothes that we see Santa in. Then the 13th is either Santa Lucia, Santa Lucia, or St. Lucy's Day. Um, and she was a Christian saint. Um, I think her deal was that her dad wanted to marry her off, and she really, really wanted to spend her life in um, prayer and devotion to the God of her understanding. And she said, no, Dad, love you, but don't love the guy. Don't love the marriage thing. I don't want to be doing that with my life. Um, thank you anyway. And I think it might be possible that somebody got so mad at her about that that they needed to kill her or something. Or they poked her eyes out or, I don't know, something. And then she got her sight back. Anyway, it's a little lugubrious. I'm sorry about that. Um, uh, but her her symbol is a candle. And so I picked yellow, like a yellow flame. And then on the 21st is, of course, the winter solstice. And I think it's on the 21st this year. That can move around, but I think it's on the 21st. And um, yes, it is. It's on Tuesday, the 21st. At least it is in Eastern Daylight Time in the United States. Daylight Time? Daylight Savings Time. Yeah. Um, and so I picked blue for the midnight sky. And then, of course, on Christmas, I forgot all about Hanukkah. I'm sorry, I wasn't raised Jewish. And it's easy for me to forget everybody else's holidays. Um, but there's also Hanukkah, which could be blue, and um, or silver. And there's also uh, Kwanzaa, which could be red or green or gold or black, I think. And... Um, yeah, and there might even be some more holidays I'm missing. But anyway, these I'm not even going to have time to do all of these today. So anyway, let me get on about the business of telling you my adventure for the day. So um, one of my kids called me up and um, said that they weren't feeling well and we discussed the possibilities and decided that Western medicine was going to be one of the choices and, um, allopath, that is to say allopathic medicine. Um, so 
Oh, I should bring you all forward close. I will do that. Um, so I had planned to meet my other child um, halfway between here and there. And um, let's start out with red. Uh, and let's start out by bringing us a little closer. Okay, so I need to be right there so you can see me. So I drove to see my other child and um, we um, did all the things we said we were going to do together today, which was very sweet and very lovely. And, um, and on the trip, I got a phone call from my child who is having physical constraints today and, um, all is well. Um, it's lovely. Um, there's a bit of, of work. There's a bit of allopathic medicine. Um, there's a bit of rest, la la la. Um, the way it often is when we have less than perfect health. And, um, but I think all is going to be well. And, you know, thank the stars for allopathic medicines. When a person needs them, it's really kind of superior the way they work. So, um, that was all pretty magical. And... Um, one of the very interesting things about that was that I don't usually get riled up about things. Um, I live by myself now and, which is to say the children moved out, so I don't live with them anymore. And, um, my world, because I'm an artist who lives and works in her studio home. Um, you know, it's just me. And if I don't want to get riled up about, I mean, if I don't even want to talk about something, I don't know. I don't get into dramatic conversations very much anymore. Um, and I'm finding that I, I have to say I've completely overdone dramatic conversations in my life. Um, I wish I had known earlier that there was a little bit more leeway and that I could say, yeah, no, I don't want to do that. Um, I didn't know that as a kid. I didn't know that growing up. It was the world I lived in. We all got very dramatic all the damn time. Sorry for swearing. Um, I mean, not super sorry, but I don't mean to offend. Um, Uh, yeah. So anyway, when my kid called up and said, you know, mommy, I don't feel so great. Um, I was really cool, calm and delect uh, collected on the phone call. Um, it's the kind of mom I've always wanted to be like, you need me. I will be there. I will not get dramatic. I will not panic. I won't freak out. I won't scream at you when you do something wrong. Um, we'll figure it out together. That's my job. My job is to A, love you, and B, help you find your way through the world, even if that world includes a hospital visit. So, um, yeah, so we had our phone call and I was cool, calm, and collected. And then afterwards, I burst into tears. And for the next two hours, and a lot of that was driving, um, I sobbed, which I live alone and I didn't have cause to do any of that. I don't know. It was just sort of startling that I was doing that a lot um, today. And I mean, it felt pretty good. Like I was releasing and doing all the things that tears can be great for. Um, 
anyway, and then I got the news that, you know, things were going to work out. And, um, but it was just interesting. I was driving along thinking, wow, I'm, I'm really getting hit hard by this. And I think there's a reason for that. Um, I think I needed to see something about me. I haven't worked this out, so I don't know what it is. Um, one of the things that became very clear is I spent 22 years uh, living with my kids and there were a handful, I mean, really like maybe, I don't know, I was trying to count, um, somewhere between 10 and 20 days, the entire length of those 22 years um, where I was not physically with my children, we were living in the same place. Um, so I saw them every day for pretty much for 22 years. And then because of the pandemic and because, um, they moved out, um, it just has sort of happened that I haven't seen them hardly at all in the last 13 or 14 months. And, um, and I'm realizing that I miss them. And I think the tears today have helped me figure that out. And, uh, so there was that. Anyway, this thing happened when I was sick with cancer. Um, and I was diagnosed as, you know, three quarters of the way dead. Um, and while I was sick and doing lots of allopathic medicine and lots of everybody else's medicine too, um, I thought, what the hell? You know, this is wrong. This cannot possibly be the correct answer. And so I worked pretty hard, you know, finding some other kind of answer. And I worked hard, as the title of this video will suggest, um, invoking all kinds of magic and god goddess angels spirit guides i don't know whoever would help but kind of spirit beings not physical beings like allopathic medicine is definitely kind of physical and um it was it was um i mean i thought had thought about that kind of stuff all the time anyway for years and years, I'd been aware that there is spirit something or other going on in life, but, but I didn't have a sense of my power with it. Um, and sorry, hold on a sec. Um, and what I think I might like to, here, let's use this, how I think I might like to wield my abilities and skills. Um, so getting sick and then getting well, <laughs> which is kind of remarkable, um, uh, helped me understand that um, there are all kinds of powers in life and um, I was working on um, you know it's not all allopathic medicine there's lots of other stuff too so while I was panicking about my kid not being well um, I realized a couple of things that I needed to do and they were things that I had done either consciously or in part unconsciously. The, the magic that I invoked while I, w I was sick five years ago, um, I didn't quite, you know, like I sort of thought it existed, but I didn't know that it would work. And then it worked. And there's something kind of freaking amazing about healing stage 4b cancer um you know from from zero 
to cray cray to absolute zero in five months. Um, I don't know, that seems sort of remarkable to me, but I didn't know I could do that. And so while I was doing all the work, I mean, it's like when you're using a wrench and you know the wrench is going to get the job done, then you're like, well, yeah, you know, so I'm using a wrench, not a hammer, because I know the wrench is going to work. And I was using, first of all, it was a spiritual tool, not a physical thing, and I couldn't see it. And I grew up in a culture that said, if you can't see it, it doesn't exist. So, of course, I didn't know how to use my spiritual tools because they don't teach that stuff in kindergarten. As a matter of fact, they teach the exact opposite. They say, shame on you for being like that. Sit down, shut up, and, I don't know, smell the coffee or whatever, and um, do what I tell you, and, and don't believe in fantasy things, because um, you're bad if you do. So, so no wonder we have this hard time believing that, that spirit stuff exists. We were told that we were bad children if we messed around with that stuff. So let's try to make this one different. Um, yep, yeah, so there I was using magic, not knowing that I was using magic, but I mean, knowing that I was kind of trying to use it, but I didn't know that it would work. So it was kind of like, close your eyes, reach into the toolbox, whatever you touch first is the thing you're supposed to use. And then you sort of wave it at the, you know, broken car or whatever, and say, fix it, fix it. And then that worked. So it's, it's not how we fix cars. It's really different from how we fix cars. Um, because the mechanic, when you, he, he or she fixes your car, um, gets to look inside their toolbox and say, oh yeah, it's this wrench, not that wrench. Never mind the hammer, put the hammer someplace else. Um, yeah, I'm sort of going crazy. It was a, it, a remarkable day. So I realized um, that, that that there are tools, and I have them at my beck and call, and all I have to do is remember them. So one of the tools is when somebody is not feeling well physically, spiritually, emotionally, whatever, um, the thing to focus on is how much we love them. That love is the thing that heals. Running around in a dead panic is a lovely expression of the depth of one's feeling, but it isn't awfully helpful if what you want to offer your beloved who is not well is some advancement of their good health, then it it's more helpful to be loving them. And I know for damn sure that a whole lot of what healed me, well, probably everything that healed me, um, was love. It was my love of my life and my children's just remarkable love of me. And everybody else's willingness to love me and pray for me and say kind words to me and be just solid as a rock. And, um, so yeah, anyway, it's love. It's, it's yes, the soup that they bring, but it's the love that they bring in the door with the soup. Um, so it doesn't matter if it's allopathic medicine or anything else. Oh, and I had these nurses when I was sick. Oh, and talk about love. 17 shades of love. Sorry, didn't mean to use the shades word. Um, anyway, so I remembered with my kid today that I just needed to send love and remember everything that delights me about this human being on the planet. Oh my God, this kid is remarkable. And I th actually think that about both my kids for different reasons, but Anyway, I was thinking about that kid. So, um, yes, uh, the first thing to remember is 
to love them. And the second thing to remember um, is that I come first, that I can't send out my love to my beloveds if I'm not full. And oh, don't I wish I'd realized that 20 odd years ago. Um, I, I, yeah, I sort of bungled that. I didn't know how. There wasn't anybody to teach me. I kept, yeah, it doesn't matter. Anyway, um, I know now that I need to be full first. So um, I sat there after the initial phone call and um, said my prayers and thought about all my visualizations and prayers and the things I say and do and think and feel um, that fill me up. And I did a lot of that imagining on the car trip to see my other child. And um, I just kept remembering how much I love being their mom and all of that. So I made a list of all the things I wanted to tell you. Me first and um, and then send out love from my fullness. And then another thing we can do is ask for help from, um, you know, like I say in the title, from spirit, from magic, from God, goddess, uh, specific angels, angels in general, spirit guides, uh, passed on loved ones who might also, you know, have affection for my children. Um, yeah, I kind of called everybody that entire list. Um, and I asked them for help and, um, I got, I got a couple of times some strong senses that they were helping out. And then I got um, the phone call that my um, child was having a time of it, but that all would be well. It was not catastrophic. Um, so that was awesome. And um, the next thing, I told you all that. I told you all that. Oh, so on the trip down to see the child I was intending to see today. Um, I passed a Habitat for Humanity Restore that is in my town. And I love Habitat for Humanity. As a single mom, I'm so aware that I was just incredibly lucky to um, have a home to raise my children in. Um, no small thing to be warm and safe with one's children. And that's whether you're a single parent or not, whether you're in emotional chaos or not, it is lovely, lovely to um, be able to be safe with one's babies. And I don't care how old they are. Um, so I love the work that Habitat does for us. Um, and I learned this thing for my sister. I have to sort of end things soon here. Um, when I was sick and I had to go for a test or something, um, I would, uh, my sister taught me this really cool thing. Um, when we give, I don't know. She just said, go give somebody money um, on your way to the test and just give it because you like the organization and you wish everybody well and uh, maybe all be happy and healthy. And so I did that. You know, I'd stop by Habitat and I'd give them 20 bucks. And on my drive today, I passed by that Habitat and... I um I gave them I thought I thought I should give I should stop I should give them money 
before I get a phone call back from my kid and um, find it, you know, like put that energy out in the world of my gratitude and, and um, happiness that all is well. And um, yeah, and I, I was already late and I couldn't do it on the way down. So I did it on the way back. And when I went in to, I just decided I would give absolutely everything in my wallet to, well, not the coins, but all the bills um, to them to say thank you. And there happened to be $90 in my wallet. And um, I actually had sort of promised myself I'd give them 100 so I still need to go on the website and give them the last 10 Um and I told them this story and I said five years ago when I was really sick with cancer, um, you know, and now here I am. And and they both said, raised their hand and said, yeah, me too. So both of these people had also had a diagnosis that, well, of cancer. I, they didn't tell me what the diagnosis was, but anyway, you know, their lives had been at risk and um and we talked about like <laughs> how amazing that is to have spirit, God, magic, whatever it is, work in our lives. And so I wanted to pass that on that um, it's just never a bad idea to, to, to pass on the gratitude, to pass on the abundance, to pass on the happiness before we even have any idea of what the outcome is. Certainly after is fine too, but even before, you know, like just putting more joy into the world can put more joy into the world. And then there are more things to be joyful for, like your kid's okay. Um, so I just, that, I was like, what? Like of all the people who could have been working at the Habitat store today, it just happened to be these two people who had also had and healed some dramatic form of cancer. And so that was impressive. So my blessing for us today is may we make beauty like this and put it out in the world yeah, go out there and make a lot of pretty things. Sometimes art doesn't have to be pretty. It can just be dramatic and it can be ugly and it can be um, Picasso's Guernica. I think that's how you pronounce it. Um, and that's very important. But sometimes art can also be just beautiful. And yeah, it's or however, however you make beauty and love and kindness and hope to put that out in the world. It's really important every day. And the more we put it out there on any day, the more all that goodness will be out in the world for us and for everybody. very noisy. Thank you for listening. I'll see you next time.